Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 1 with me, Eric Gerhardt, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, we will be looking at an introduction to simple linear regression uh, via an applet and interpreting a regression line. So here we are at the top of the website, opening up the table of contents and choosing timetable. We'll scroll down to class 9. And there is an app here which will open and an RMD file, an HTML, which is just the output of the RMD, and a data file. So that's um, something new for us, basically, to need to download a markdown file and a data file. This assignment is its own assignment. It's separate from your outline. All right, so I'm going to uh, save the RMD file into my class folder and I'm going to save my dat file into the class folder and we'll go over to our studio and we'll open that up I'm also going to uh, open the simple linear regression SLR applet in a new window by holding control and clicking on it it will open a new tab up here and we'll come back and look at that in a second so let's go over to our studio and open the file that we just downloaded. Don't know why it went there. All right. <clears throat> this is the data file, a rocket propellant data set. And here's the RMD file. We'll open the RMD file. And as you should do each time you download an RMD file from the website, is you, the first thing you should do is knit it. If you don't download the data set, it will fail when you try to uh, compile it. Let's open this um, assignment in the browser and we'll read through and see what we need to do. All right, there's two parts. The first part is an intuition building exercise based on the applet. And the second part is to interpret a regression analysis by answering five questions. So let's uh, start with part one, the simple linear regression intuition building exercise. I have a description here, but I'm just going to go to the applet and say the things that are right here. You can click on it here, or we already opened it from the web page. Let's resize this applet so that everything fits on here. That's pretty good. Okay, so in uh, the top left area, we've got a plotting area, and we're going to be clicking and putting some points here. On the bottom, the only thing that really to use down here is the reset button, and I just clicked it one time right there. In the top right, it tells you how many data points you have, whether or not you're going to fit your own regression line, whether or not to display a best fit line, and um, it gives you the equation of your own line. And for the best fit line, it gives you the R squared as well as the uh, equation of the best fit line. And then there's some options. You'll be uh, selecting from these options regularly, either to add a point, remove points, move points around, or move your regression line. So just as a very quick example, it's currently selected to add points. So I'm going to click here and going to add, add some points. Um, we can click Remove Points and choose one of those and make it go away. We can click Move Points and click on a point and drag it around. And uh, we can also do Move Your Fit Line. Well, it's not displayed right now, so let's click Fit Your Own Line. When this is selected, then you get a choice of grabbing these green anchor points and moving them. Note that uh, a mistake that I make very commonly is I'll have add point moved, uh, selected here, and I'll go to click on one of these points and I've just dropped a point on the green dot instead of moving it. So do make sure you click on this to move your, your line. So uh, you might move your best fit line to the way you might think a regression line would look and then you could compare it with what the actual line looks like. All right, that's everything. Let's click on Reset and walk through 
the exercises. All right, the first um, of the, I think, four challenges here is to first uh, choose three points where the best fit line is, has a zero intercept and a slope of one. Okay, so we're going to go over here and select add points, and we're going to display the line of best fit. We'll click three points in here. Okay, well, won't think too hard about it initially. And then how can we make this red regression line? Notice that the, the order here is switched from how we usually display equations in statistics. Usually we start with the intercept and then we have the slopes after that, but it it's being displayed the way a mathematician would, would write it in terms of slope and then intercept. Anyway, so we're going to go down here to move points, and we're going to start to move these points so that the slope is equal to 1 and the intercept is equal to 0, right? So that's a diagonal line that comes up this way. So you can choose a, a number of uh, strategies here. In fact, I might just choose a strategy where I'm using these squares and basically sort of select points on there that help me make a diagonal line. Something like that. That's getting pretty close to a slope of 1 and intercept of 0. I can probably do a little bit better. Anyway, instead of watching me do that, you can uh, do it yourself and convince yourself that you can you can do that. You might even give yourself a challenge and and have them be a bit offset and still and still try to do it. Okay. All right. So that is the first challenge. I'm going to go back and double just double check. That's what it says. Okay. All right. Let's come back, reset, and read the next challenge. Fit your own line to seven points. So I'm going to click seven points anywhere in the in the plotting area, click fit my own line, and then try to move it to to what I think will be the, the best regression line. And when I think I've got it, click the, the best fit line and compare it. And you might do this a couple times. I do also have a link here to another app which is very good at, at um, showing how this works as well. All right, so we'll start with seven points. Uh, let's just have a sort of a negative, oops, let's take that away and reset this. Okay, you can't display the best fit line and then make your own. All right, I'll just sort of have a, sort of a negatively sloped thing here. I'm going to click fit your own line and move your fit line. And let's see. So I'm going to try to minimize the, the square of the vertical distances between these points. And I think it's probably, I don't know, that's, that's probably pretty close right there. I'm going to click display. Uh, okay, so this one up here would have pulled, was pulling up this one up a little bit further. All right, let me do it one more time. Reset. And this time I'll do uh, something with a positive slope. Oh, I'll give myself a hard point. How about right there? All right, move my points here. So I think it's going to look, um, this is probably going to be a little bit higher. I don't know, I think maybe the whole thing is a little bit lower because of this one point down there. Something about there. Let's Let's see. Nope, <laughs> a little bit steeper than than it should have been. These these points right here are influencing it a little bit more to raise it up higher. Okay, that's a very hard exercise. I practiced well. Okay, never mind. I practiced one earlier and it like it's almost perfect. Um, I can't believe I was feeling so insecure to have to say that. All right, so in 
illustrate the concept of leverage. All right, so this is cool. Leverage is a measure of how much a point is an outlier in the x direction. Okay, if, if a point can have leverage but not be influential, um, but a point with leverage is often influential. So I'll show you in a moment. It's called a leverage. It's called leverage because points with high leverage potentially have a lot of influence on the regression line slope by pulling it up and down like a lever. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to display the best fit line, add nine points in a cluster, and then add one solo point to itself on the other side of the plot. And then we're going to move that solo point up and down and compare that with moving a cluster point up and down. So we'll start, we've got a reset plot. We're going to display a fit line, add points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, there's nine points. Anytime you get sort of a clump of like sort of a circle, your slope is gonna be close to zero. All right, we'll add one point way over here to the right. And we'll choose move points. And if I grab this point and move it, you can see this one point basically dictates where the regression line is. This clump of points on the left is essentially acting as a single point, right? And this point on the right is acting as a single point, and it can drag it around. All right. In contrast, if I grab one of the points over here and move it up and down, it does move the regression line. It certainly influences it, but it's not very much because it's it's near the center of the data horizontally, whereas this point is far away in the horizontal or x direction. So that's, that's the concept of leverage. Oh, I guess one more comment I want to make. Let me remove this point for a moment. OK, so here is a point with high leverage. Take a look at this regression line. Okay, I've got point one two one slope and five point two intercept. Here's a point with high leverage, but it did not influence the regression line very much. Okay, but knowing that we have a point with high leverage, uh, we should be a bit concerned uh, because if this if this point were to have been slightly different, of course the slope and intercepts would have been slightly different, or drastically different, perhaps. All right, last one. Relationship between correlation and slope. So this is one I'm going to let you work on on your own. Um, but here we have a, we're going to add seven points and display the best fit line, and then we're going to move those points to try to make both of these conditions true at the same time. Okay? An R squared, or excuse me, a correlation, R, that's negative, but a best fit line that has a positive slope. Okay, Can those two things be true at the same time? So we're going to display the best fit line. We're going to add some points. We want a positive slope. Okay, there's seven points. Here's my positive slope, 0.204. And here's my correlation, 0.8. We want this correlation to be negative. And so you're going to move these points around and attempt to give yourself a correlation that is negative while making the slope positive. Here they're both they're both very close to zero. Okay. And so you just sort of play with this and see what you can do. All right. Let's move on to the part two, interpreting the analysis. So what I've got here is five questions that are going to interpret the data below. So let's first uh, scroll down to the data and discuss this. A rocket motor is manufactured by bonding an igniter propellant and a sustainer propellant together inside a metal housing. Everyone knows that. The shear strength of the bond, so that's like if you've got um, Oh, the sh everyone know what shear strength is? <laughs> um, it's uh, it's like when you you take your two fingers and you push them together and then you use I don't know, rub them side to side. That's sort of shear. It's sort of when things uh, separate going side to side. 
rather than pulling them straight apart. Shearing is sliding to the side. The shear strength of the bond between the two types of propellant is an important quality characteristic. It is suspected that shear strength is related to the age in weeks of the batch of sustainer propellant. 20 observations on these two characteristics are given below. The first column is shear strength in pounds per square inch, PSI, and the second is age of propellant in weeks. So this is where you've, you've downloaded the data set, and we're going to read that data set in to a, an object called dat underscore rocket. Um, I try, I've gotten in the convention of anytime I read in data to have it be called dat underscore something. So let's start look at the structure of that data set. We've got uh, 20 observations, so 20 rows, and two variables. That's two columns. These are the first uh, five observations for each of the variables. Shear strength and age in weeks are both numeric variables. And um, head and tail are functions that give you the first six um, or last six observations in a data set. And you can put a comma and specify another number of ob observations you want to see. OK, so there's some values. Here is a plot where I'm plotting age as the x variable, the shear strength as the y variable. Um, I change the, the color to have a light background. I plot the points. I have a, a smoothing line, which uses a method linear model. And by default, it is a straight line. I do not plot the standard error lines or standard error bars around the regression line. And full range equals true means that this line extends beyond the data points. I modified my horizontal limits for the x-axis uh, to go all the way down to zero, zero age in weeks. Okay, so if you've got a brand new um, batch, it goes down to zero. So let me zoom out just a little bit. There's a look at the plot. We clearly see a negative relationship here as age in weeks increases from zero up to 25, which is about half a year. Um, the shear strength is decreasing from about 2,500 down to 1,750. And it's a remarkably straight relationship at this point. Uh, it does look like there are some extreme observations. There's sort of one here that whose distance from the line is much greater than you would expect. Same thing here, this point here. Um, they tr sort of balance each other out in terms of their leverage uh, pulling down. And uh, to me, this just suggests that th maybe this was a bad application or something or a bad batch. It just uh, the shear strength is much lower than than all the others. So maybe something uh, bad happened in in the manufacturing process. The last part, let me make this big again, is I fit a simple linear model. So LM for the data dat rocket. We put the y the y variable, shear strength uh, as it relates to age in weeks, the x variable. I'm storing that linear model object as LMSA, and then I'm looking at the summary of that object. And finally, this table is basically uh, what you'll be using to write your interpretations. And there are really only three numbers in this table that you care about. There are, uh, just walking through from top to bottom, the call indicates how did, how, how were the results below generated? It was generated with this call LM up here, just like this. And it, right, I've sort of abbreviated the input here, but if I, if I was specifying all of the arguments of the LM function, I would, I would have said formula equals and then specified the formula. Um, the residuals tell us something about the the errors, the vertical distances between the points and the regression lines, the median. We're sort of hoping for the median to be close to zero 
and the min and first quartile should to be somewhat balanced to the third quartile in the maximum because ultimately later in the semester we'll learn that we want the residuals to have a normal distribution which we know to be symmetric and centered at zero. Then we have the coefficients table and the first column uh, doesn't have a, a title but it, it's the uh, it's the variables that are in your model. The first one is the intercept, and the, the second one is the age in weeks. The estimates, this column, tell you what those are estimated to be. So we expect we have an intercept of 2600, and we have a slope of negative 37. And if we scroll up for a second to the plot, this line intercepts, oh, better make this a little smaller. Here's zero. The intercept is, hmm, what was it? <laughs> 2625, okay, 2627. So it intercepts at zero at 2627, and the slope is um, for every unit increase in age, this line decreases by the slope, decreases by 37. Okay, the standard errors, T statistics, and the p-values we'll discuss uh, later in the semester, and we don't. The significance codes relate to the symbols to the right of these p-values that we'll discuss later on as well. Um, at the bottom, we have residual standard error. We don't uh, care too much about that at the moment. Multiple R squared is important. Okay, this is our R squared value, so 0.9 is is a very high um, uh, r-squared value and the rest of it adjusted r-squared in this bottom f statistic we don't care about so the three numbers we care about are the intercept the slope and the r-squared with those in mind let's scroll up and review the questions to answer all right, so refer to the data and output below to answer these questions. We've just referred to it. Answer the questions in this document, compile to HTML, print to PDF, and submit it to UNM Learn. So we're not adding this, as I said at the very beginning. Um, do not add this to your all RMDU document. This is a separate assignment. Oh, let's, let's click on here. All right, number one, write the regression equation. So in this equation down here, you'll put in your intercept, and your slope from the table below. I want you to interpret the slope. If you remember what I said two minutes ago in the video, um, that will be the interpretation. Interpret r squared, okay? So I did, I'm paging down. So r squared, you'll recall from the notes, is the proportion of variance explained in the response by its relationship with the x variable over and above the grand mean. Okay, so the grand mean for for the y variable is probably somewhere around here, I don't know, maybe 21, uh, 2100, 2150, something like that. That's the mean of y. Um, you know, so if you take all these points and you project them onto the y axis, where's the middle? somewhere somewhere around here and so if you recalculate the uh, sum of squared errors uh, the distances from the mean you get a very very large number and now if you look at the the sum of squared errors from this regression line each of these vertical distances is quite a bit smaller and so it's it's a relationship um, of those of those numbers that gives you the R squared value. And, and that's uh, illustrated in the notes, chapter eight. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, in our case, we have that 90% um, of the variability in Y is explained by this regression model with age in weeks. Um, another another thing you could say, but it's probably not worth saying here, is that it's also the predictive ability of the model. How well do you expect this model to predict new observations? 90% is darn good. 
um, show 90% to a biologist and they'll uh, do backflips. Um, our biologists live in a messy world where R squareds of 0.15 are pretty good. Um, all right, next, complete this table of predictions. All right, so we've got aging weeks at five weeks, 20, and 40, and we want to predict the shear PSI for each of those. So that is uh, in this plot, okay, at five weeks, what is the prediction? So it's this point here on this regression line. How would you calculate that? Well, we've got the intercept and the slope. And let's go over to, let's see, I want to copy these numbers. Let's go over to RStudio and use it like a calculator. Okay, so I'm down here in the console. And we want to predict, so there's the intercept plus the slope times, oh, wait, we're going to need a multiplication here. All right, so when age is 5, this is the predicted value for uh, the shear. So in the R markdown document, I'm going to sort of jump to the bottom here. Here we are for 5. You can paste that number in here. Okay, and do that for each of the three estimates. Okay. So you're just substituting into your equation uh, the value for x, and that gives you your value for y. All right, the last part is telling me how you feel about each of these predictions. Okay. So how do you feel about the prediction when age equals 5, age equals 20, and age equals 40? So if I scroll down for a moment to the plot, we've got uh, when age equals 5, that's here. When age equals 20, that's here. And age equals 40, that's way over here. Okay, So you should be able to say something about whether you expect this model to give you um, reliable predictions for each of those values and whether or not the data are you know doing a good job informing those predictions and that is everything for this assignment when you're done um, you know compile it print it to PDF and submit it to you and learn